berberine is one of Mother Nature's most powerful plant medicines. In my experience, uh, we use it clinically for a lot of different things. But you can see here, berberine is a naturally occurring compound extracted from different types of plants like barberry and golden seal. So if you've ever done golden seal tea or taken a golden seal herb or taken a supplement that had barberry, you are actually taking berberine. It's one of the active, predominantly active ingredients. It's a bright yellow compound, so if you're taking it into pill, it'll look really, really yellow in color. It has a 3,000 year history of use in both traditional Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine. And what's happening now is we're recognizing in the West the power of this plant-based chemical, and scientists have been studying this. The studies on this have ramped up over the past 10 years specifically, and we're looking at everything from diabetes to cancer to arthritis to treating infections, and so we're going to dive into some of that research. So let's talk about some of the health-enhancing properties uh, of berberine. We know it has, number one, anti-inflammatory effects, and we're going to talk about how in just a minute. It has anti-cancer properties as well as antioxidant properties and antimicrobials. So there have been research studies that have shown the treatment of viral infections effectively with berberine. As a matter of fact, there was a recent study, I believe, on, on actually COVID where they were looking at berberine. Uh, but we also know that different types of parasitic infections have been treated with berberine, particularly Giardia, which is a parasite that can cause severe gastric inflammation and diarrhea. We also know that in the research that H. pylori, which is a type of bacteria that can overcolonize the stomach, creating gastric reflux uh, and erosion of the esophagus, has also been uh, being looked at to use as berberine as a treatment. And as a matter of fact, some studies are, are using berberine in combination with other drugs to see better outcomes. If we look at this research review, you can see for 3,000 years in traditional medicine, berberine has been used to stop chronic bleeding, to relieve arthralgia or arthritis, to fight infections, and to treat urinary stones due to its diuretic effects. Therapeutic uses in both animals and human trials have been concluded that its extracts may have antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-mutagenic, that's that's cancer fighting properties, as well as antimicrobial and antiparasitic activities. It's also been tested for the management of chronic cholecystitis, that's gallbladder inflammation, as well as in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and pain for arthritis and other rheumatoid arthritis, um, for osteoarthritis and other rheumatoid arthritis disorders. It's safe for human intake, and it's also been approved by the FDA. Again, this is a natural compound that has hard science backing it up. So, you can see here in this research study, just as an example, um, this was a, a trial where they were using triple therapy, which is a, a mixture of antibiotics and antacids combined with berberine to treat H. pylori, a bacterial infection, of the stomach, which is a very, very common infection. And again, this was published in, uh, in, in the Chinese literature, in the Chinese Medical Journal. You can see with the development of ch traditional Chinese medicine research, berberine has showed good efficacy and safety in the eradication of H. pylori. The present study aimed to evaluate the efficacy and safety of triple therapy containing berberine, amoxicillin, vonoprazan for the initial treatment of H. pylori. They studied 300 patients and they found that the efficacy of berberine in triple therapy for H. pylori initial treatment was comparable to that of uh, the, the regular therapies that doctors are using um, with, quad, with multiple antibiotics and, and, and antacids. So again, berberine, a natural agent, very effective for H. pylori. We've, we know that studies have been found on, in multiple arenas, and I'll show you those, that berberine can lower blood sugar, and it aids in the management of diabetes. It reduces cholesterol. It can reduce triglycerides. It can reduce blood pressure. 
as well, it can exhibit antimicrobial, as I just said, antimicrobial effects and properties and fights infections, reducing bacterial diarrhea. It may also reduce inflammation and support mental health, as we'll talk about, and it may reduce the risk of colon cancer and, and uh, colon cancer recurrence. Now, a lot of research on berberine. We'll, we'll look at, at some of the research. This is not an exhaustive uh, review of the research on berberine, but I want to show you some studies uh, to give you a good idea of how, the power of berberine. Um, in this particular research study, it was 70 adults between the ages of 75 or 25 to 75 with a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. And this was a 13-week study where they used, it was a berberine versus metformin trial. So they were comparing the drug metformin. For those of you um, who don't know, metformin is a common medication used to treat diabetes, but they were comparing berberine versus metformin in this trial. The dose of berberine was 500 milligrams TID, that's three times a day. So a total of 1,500 milligrams of berberine uh, was given per day to these type two diabetics. And so here's what they found. You can see over here highlighted, identical effect in the regulation of glucose metabolism. So it was identical, meaning berberine it worked equally as well as metformin in the regulation of blood glucose. And that's fasting blood glucose as, as well as postprandial or after eating blood glucose. It's also the, it, it was equal to uh, impacting fasting insulin and postprandial after eating insulin. So again, it was equal on the footing of metformin in all three of those areas. Now, it had better regulation of lipid or fat metabolism than metformin. It, the triglycerides and total cholesterol was significantly lower than in the metformin group. So in other words, it was more effective at lowering LDL type of cholesterol and it was more effective at lowering triglycerides in these patients. And then you can see here, it significantly decreased hemoglobin A1C levels um, and at a level comparable to that of metformin. So again, in this particular study, metformin versus berberine, we had metformin was equal to berberine, or ber rather berberine was equal to metformin for lowering blood glucose, postprandial blo blood glucose, as well as insulin. It was better than metformin at reducing lipids and triglycerides and reducing cholesterol and it was equal to metformin at regulating hemoglobin A1C. So there is another study. This was a randomized controlled trial on the cardiovascular effect of berberine. It was done in 84 men aged 20 to 65 years with hyperlipidemia or high cholesterol. It was a 12-week trial. These gentlemen were given 500 milligrams twice a day. That's 1,000 milligrams total per day. Um, of berberine uh, or placebo. And so in this particular situation, you can see berberine was safe with no serious adverse events. It led to a reduction in LDLC, which is a type of cholesterol, uh, and it led to an increase in testosterone in these gentlemen. So improvements in testosterone as well as a reduction in cholesterol. So again, those were some of the measurements that they were looking at in that particular study where berberine had a positive impact. And then we have another research study on berberine for the treatment of premature ventricular contractions, oftentimes referred to as PVCs. So if you've been diagnosed with a PVC, pay attention here. So this was a meta-analysis and a systemic re review of multiple trials. So what, what they did here is they, they looked at 10 randomized controlled trials with almost 1,000, about 900 participants included in this meta-analysis. The results showed that compared to antiarrhythmic drugs, berberine combined with antiarrhythmic drugs had a higher effective rate. Um, and then they go on down here to show that even without the, the drugs, the berberine still had an impact on PVCs. The conclusion, the results suggest that berberine is an effective and safe adjunctive method for PVCs. In addition, berberine is recommended for patients with PVCs who had severe adverse reactions after the administration of antiarrhythmic drugs. So some people, when they take these antiarrhythmic drugs, 
Some people have negative side effects and they don't do well with them. And so what the authors of this paper are trying to conclude is that berberine might be an alternative for those who don't do well with those types of medications. Now, this, there was another review that was published looking at the impacts of berberine on five different types of situations. And you can see here, this is kind of a, a pictorial diagram of that. So one of those situations was obesity. Another was non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, as well as hyperlipidemia and uh, gout, the arthritis gout, and then diabetes. So in this review study, um, they were looking at the effect of berberine on all of these conditions. And so what they found in people with obesity is that berberine helped to reduce total body weight, to reduce the production of fat. Um, it increased or improved um, brown adipose tissue thermogenesis. What that means is brown fat or brown adipose is a type of fat that it can actually improve um, our ability to lose weight. It improved or increased energy expenditure, it, and it reduced the fibrosis of fat tissue as well as reduced inflammation. But here's one other unique finding is that it had an effect on the gut, right? So it actually reduced abnormal bacteria in the GI tract. So it improved the, the microbiome itself. And we, we now are learning that the gut plays a major role in obesity. And so, again, a lot of different impacts on, on being overweight. Then we also have liver disease, fatty liver disease. What, what did berberine do in this case? It reduces the accumulation of fat in the liver, and um, it reduces fatty liver itself, so hepatic steatosis. It reduces liver inflammation. It reduces oxidative stress in the liver, and again, it changes the gut microbiome and dysbiosis. Now, how does that impact the liver? Let's, let's pause for just a minute um, because I think it's important to understand. There are compounds in the GI tract. So if we draw just a picture here of the tube of the GI tract and the cells that line it, you have different types of microorganisms in the GI tract. And if we're talking about we'll say dysbiosis, these are abnormal microbes living in the GI tract. Well, these types of bacteria generate a compound called LPS. That stands for lipopolysaccharide. Now, what lipopolysaccharide has been shown to do is it's been shown to damage the lining of the gut, creating a hole or a microscopic leak, if you will, leaky gut. And when those LPS, those lipopolysaccharides, penetrate through the gut, they traverse to the liver. And this is now one of the um, causes that we're finding contributes to fatty deposition in the liver and liver inflammation. So by altering the microbiome, this is one of the mechanisms of action that they believe berberine has is by helping with gut dysbiosis, it's reducing those lipopolysaccharides access to the liver, um, and so the liver's not taking on that damage. The other disease that's been studied is hyperlipidemia, and so this is, this is you know, for those of you who um, aren't familiar that, with that term, it's cholesterol, right? It's high cholesterol. Now, cholesterol placking can form inside a vascular uh, tree inside the blood vessel itself and reduce or potentially create a, a plaque uh, that can lodge into your, into your arteries, creating the risk for you know, stroke and heart attack. What we're saying here with berberine is it's been shown to reduce total cholesterol. It's also been shown to reduce triglycerides. It's been shown to reduce LDLC, which is sometimes referred to as what they call the bad cholesterol. But it's also been shown to improve HDLC, which is oftentimes referred to as good cholesterol. We know that it also has been shown um, to improve the parameters of how the liver actually copes and deals with packaging and processing cholesterol. So a lot of mechanisms there for the improvement of hyperlipidemia. Then we have gout. We know that berberine administration can reduce uric acid. So those of you who have 
um, been diagnosed with gout and you're looking for something natural to support yourself, you might consider talking with your doctor about the use of berberine. We know that it accelerates the excretion of uric acid through the kidneys, so it helps your body get rid of excessive uric acid. It reduces the enzyme xanthine oxidase. Now xanthine oxidase is an enzyme that helps to form uric acid, so it's reducing the ability for that uric acid to form in the first place. But we also know from a, a, a subjective parameter, it reduces joint inflammation. Now with diabetes, we've got improvement of insulin secretion, so it helps the body make more insulin. It re re reduces the potential for insulin resistance. It reduces gluconeogenesis, so that's the increased um, production of glucose by the liver. It improves glucose uptake by the cells, so that's helping your cells break that glucose down. It reduces inflammation as well. It has an impact on alpha-glucosidase, DPP-4, and PTPB-1B as well. It Again, you keep seeing this trend, this gut microbiota gut dysbiosis it reduces that impact and again a lot of uh, a lot of what we're learning and a lot of what researchers are showing is a lot of these illnesses start within the gut with that dysbiosis and berberine is a major player here now i showed you a minute ago that um, berberine plays that role um, here with lps by errat helping to eradicate these particular types of bacteria but one of the other things that berberine's been shown to do is increase the production of short chain fatty acids. The, um, kind of the prime example there is a substance called butyrate. Now butyrate, if you, if you aren't sure, or, or if you wanna learn a lot more about butyrate, go back and watch my crash course. But butyrate is very protective of the lining of the GI tract. Butyrate helps produce a coating that lines the gut and protects it from becoming inflamed and protects it from things like LPS. So again, berberine has a more than one effect. It not only does it have an impact on lowering LPS through dysbiotic bacteria, but it also increases short chain fatty acid production, which offers a protective effect for the GI tract lining.